In this video, I'm going to share with you a super simple way to ask Microsoft Copilot anything. I call it the perfect prompt formula, and it's all about structuring your prompt in a way that Copilot can easily understand. Stick around as I'll compare real life examples using the perfect prompt formula and show the difference. And let me tell you, the results are quite impressive. Just like there are techniques to help you communicate effectively with a human, there are tips to help you get better results with Copilot when writing prompts. Here is an example of two prompts and the different results. I first asked Copilot, what can I do in Paris? Copilot gives us eight bullet points as a result, including the Eiffel Tower and a bunch of other activity. As you can tell, the prompt is very generic, it's lacking details, but Copilot still gives you a rough idea, but it doesn't take into consideration any of your context. Are you traveling solo? Are you traveling with kids? What is your budget? And all the important details that will make your trip a success or a complete failure. <laughs> so now what I did, I asked Copilot something else. I gave him way more context. Give me a five bullet points of the nicest things to do in Paris. I am going there with my family, which include two kids of five and seven years old. I want you to take into account activities that are kid friendly and that we can do in a four days period. Base your research on the best reviews in the last year. Now let's compare the answers I got from my two prompts. The first bullet point from this second prompt is Disneyland in Paris. Of course, kids love theme park. There is no Eiffel Tower in these results, which I find kind of weird. He still got the river cruise on La Seine River and the Louvre Museum. Since Copilot only gave me five bullet points and the first prompt gave me back eight activities, I thought I could ask him three more activities. The result is that he actually gave me three more kids friendly activities. In other words, the answer he gave me was very tailored for my specific needs. The key takeaway here is the context and details are everything. Just think about it this way. If you tell your girlfriend, I am with another girl tonight, she might be mad, right? But if you tell your girlfriend, I am with another girl tonight and it's my mom for her 50th birthday, then the result might be different. Then she might think, why am I not invited? But that's, that's another topic. <laughs> Copilot prompts need to be structured, which means there is a hierarchy to respect in order to achieve great results. So here is the four step perfect prompt formula I was talking about. It is the GCES formula. First, you have the goal. This is where you determine what do you want from Copilot. For example, give me a five bullet points of the nicest things to do in Paris. This is my goal. Note that this is the only mandatory field in all of this formula. The second prompt ingredient is the context. As I just told you with my mom's birthday example, context is everything. <laughs> it is actually why do you need it and who's involved. For example, I am going there with my family, which include two kids of five and seven years old. The third ingredient of the secret formula is the E for expectation. This tells Copilot how it should respond. For example, I want you to take into account activities that are kid friendly and that we can do in a four days period. If you would prompt in a work context, this could be different. This could be used to set the tone in an email. Like I want the email to be more professional or I want the email to be more friendly. The fourth and last ingredient of the secret prompt formula is the source. In other words, what information or samples do you want Copilot to use? For example, base your research on articles that are less than one year old. This will give Copilot more information on what you are looking for and add even more details to your prompt. If you use Copilot in the Microsoft 365 apps, which means the Microsoft Copilot Pro version, the source will be eventually useful in Outlook. For example, summarize my 10 latest emails or another use case could be, can you make me a summary of my five previous teams conversation that I missed 
during my vacation. Now that we know how to craft the perfect prompt, let's try it. Actually, let's mix and match the secret prompt formula ingredients. In other words, I'll switch the context, the expectation, the source, and we'll see how it affects the results. So if you remember properly our first prompt, it was give me a five bullet points of the nicest things to do in Paris. I'm going there with my family, which includes two kids. I want you to take into account activities that are kid friendly and we can do it in four days, etc. But now let's switch things a little bit. In my previous life, before having kids, I was running a traveling agency. <laughs> And from there, I was organizing trip to Paris. So let's try another prompt example. Here is the prompt that I came up with. Draft an email of thing to do in Paris. That's the goal. I am the owner of a traveling agency and want to organize a trip to Paris for 60 years old travelers with no experience. That's the context. I want the email to be very polite since it is elder people. This is the expectation. Base your research on articles that are less than one year old. That is the source. No surprise here, Copilot understood the different context. It really adapted my email for elder people over the age of 60. It changed the kids friendly activity to more elder activities such as cafe. The Eiffel Tower is back. So just like we can expect from Copilot, it gave us a really tailored answer based on our prompt because we used the secret formula. Now let's change the source. So the source is the last part of your prompt and make sure that you get this hierarchy right. So what we switched here is base your research on articles that are at least more than six year old. What I tried to do here is that in 2019, the Notre Dame de Paris Cathedral actually burned. So I was trying to see if there will be something different in the answer. I also asked Copilot to bold the changes so it will be easier for me to see what actually changed versus the previous answer. First thing I realized is that it only added four more activities and it didn't bold them. It actually put two stars or asterisks beside the examples that were actually added and it actually changed the source as I asked but Copilot is very bad with the timestamps so it didn't realize it was more than six years old so it actually gave me different articles that you can see here beside the learn more notice but these articles are not more than six year old so for the source keep it when it's in your microsoft 365 app so your emails or your teams <laughs> okay now let's change the context and the expectation i will change my 60 years old audience to a younger audience with lots of experience and I want the email to be very friendly. So here is the prompt. Draft an email of things to do in Paris. I am the owner of a traveling agency and want to organize a trip to Paris for 30 years old traveler with a lot of experience. I want the email to be very friendly and then we keep the same source. Okay, so this time Copilot really adapted his speech for 30 years old travelers. Since I asked for the email to be very friendly, it seems to have hit the mark this time. It even ended the email with cheers. This is so friendly, right? <laughs> Last thing I'm gonna ask Copilot is to like this YouTube video about Copilot since it's so useful, right? I've put together this infographic of do's and downs in Copilot, which is available to download for free in the link in the description. And I also have Copilot courses available in the description below. Cheers!